Today we're going to be going over how to use the server tier administration tool which is available online for free uh, from mabuso.com. There's a link in the description and what you'll want to do is you'll want to start that download here and I've already downloaded that and this will have a setup program inside for you and we'll go ahead and install this using all of our default settings and I'm going to create a desktop icon Now that that's installed, you'll notice that this is designed to run as administrator by default. And that's very important as we'll be administering the local machine. When we first run this on a server environment that has NAV installed, we can see that it will detect any of the services that are currently set up. In this particular environment, I have all of the standards installed. Uh, you'll see that we've got the server which is running and the business web service and it also lists the detailed version information for us which will be important in later videos when we talk about builds. In this particular case what we're trying to accomplish is we want to have all of the databases of our environment be available to us in the RTC. In this particular environment, we have our production base, a production database called the demo database. Uh, we've got a development environment and a user testing environment. To set up multiple service tiers to share the same port, uh, which is a different discussion altogether as to port sharing versus not port sharing, uh, I'm going to advocate that we do that. And we have to come to our services and enable and start this net TCP sh port sharing service. Go ahead and set that to automatic and start it. This will allow the NAV service tier to coexist with multiple service tiers using the same default port uh, as it was installed. So to enable that on this service, we first need to stop that service enable port sharing and now we can go ahead and start the service. There are a couple of additional setup configuration options that we'll need to do here in the service tier administration tool. Uh, we need to let it know where the RTC versions are and the NAV service tier versions are. So go ahead and click the RTC version settings and we'll add, we have a nice clean environment so we'll add the default program files, NAV, 6.0, full Taylor client, and what we're looking for is the Microsoft Dynamics NAV client.exe in the Roll Taylor client folder. And that will add that here and tell us exactly what version number. And we'll need to do the same procedure uh, going up one folder level. We want to go into the service folder and select the Microsoft Dynamics NAV server.exe. Uh, if you don't have file extensions on, you may get confused as there is a Microsoft Dynamics NAV server exe.config. Uh, without file extensions on, you'll just see this as NAV server and you'll see this as server exe. Make sure to look over at the type and select the application. Now with that in place, uh, let's look a little bit at some of the options here on the right hand side. Uh, what this tells us is the configuration of the RTC, what would happen with this particular service tier, uh, which we need to have started, uh, which RTC settings we're going to have for this environment. So for example, in this production environment, I know what my default company I would prefer to be, and all of the other configuration options that are in the RTC uh, config settings file. And we can go ahead from here and start the RTC against that particular server. And with my company 
information uh, set a system indicator turned on, we'll see that we're connecting to Cronus in our demo database on which server we're connected to. So that is the correct database. So we want to make a new uh, environment for our user acceptance and testing environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new service and we'll ask for the service name. I recommend that you try to make the service name match the database name so there's never confusion. So just go ahead and copy that service name and that database name into the service name. And it wants to know what the base folder is. We're going to use the 32012 uh, version and we want that to live in the same space. So I'll go ahead and put that into the NAV6 hole folder here. Uh, we can choose at this point if we want to have a web service and if we want port sharing. Uh, my user environment, we do want a web service, so we'll say OK. Right now behind the scenes that's copying a variety of folders. And if we look now at the service list, we'll see that there's the default one still running and available and the new NAV server with the user testing. We do need to come over here to the right hand side with that selected and choose which database instance, if any, uh, and what the database name is. We still have that available on the clipboard, so pop that in. And it asks you for the server instance, which is the uh, name in the connection string of the service tier. So we're going to have those be nice and matched. Uh, you can choose also in this environment if you wanted to enable debugging, uh, which for acceptance and testing or development probably would make sense. We'll go ahead and uh, keep these settings as is. You'll notice that there is no save that we have to press, so that is all set. We'll go ahead and start that service. And now that user testing environment is running as well as the uh, default install. Go ahead and start the RTC against it. And now we can see that the Roll Tailor client opened up. And if we look at the server information, we are connected to that local host uh, user testing environment that we've specified. We would obviously want to turn on the system indicator for the users to keep a close eye on exactly which environment they're connecting up to. And we can go ahead and create additional services just as easily. Uh, and deleting services are very straightforward. If you look in the services list, based on what we have done, you'll see that it created the NAV server here is the default one, and right after it is that user testing one that we created. That is as simple as that, and when you want uh, users to be able to connect up to these different environments, they don't need to use the service to your administration tool, obviously. Uh, you would just go ahead and pass them the connection string that they would need. So, for example, uh, whatever the service string uh, you've been already using, you would add slash and then the name of the instance you specified. So, in my case, user testing and those users would be able to have that available to them. After you connect to a server after the, the first time, uh, it becomes available in their cache settings here. So very straightforward, very simple, uh, and very critical in the RTC world. And hopefully that was helpful, and we'll be doing an additional video talking about how to manage multiple builds on the same machine. Uh, particularly using the service to your administration tool to help us out with that too.